What's going on? It's your boys, Bam, DMAC, Nate, Chad, Chocolate Pain, and Kill You With Truth. What's going on, fellas? Nate, how you doing, pal? I'm good, man. Uh, my kid's off to school today, so that's good. Uh, went for a, a jog this morning. A jog? Yeah. Huh? I'm trying to get my body moving in the morning. I you know, went for a walk yesterday brisk one with a little bit of jog here and there but today i was like hey man i actually feel and i started jogging and i jogged probably almost the whole mile which for me was a long way just yeah. the injuries i've had just my back my ankles and stuff but i was like wow man i actually got a little sweat going i got a little uh elevated heart rate the blood pumping so it was great man it felt good I did not think you could run. I thought that was you and Chad, you both you guys. I thought running was like forbidden. It was out. Like that's not something you guys could do anymore. I want to, so I'm trying. Um, and so we'll see how it goes. But uh, it's basically because my back and my body hasn't let me. But I've been slowly over the years trying to work on my alignment, my strength, my core strength, my you know flexibility and things like that. So maybe. You know, fingers crossed, I can go into old age like you, D-Mac, and be able to run around and uh, go for long runs and shit like that. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but, 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 but it, it just felt good to get outside and, you know, I watched the sunrise out there. It was cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm pro you running. It's the one thing that I had over you and Chad. It's the one <laughs> thing in life that I could do better than you and Chad. I, I, I can't have you catch up with me on that particular thing. Chad, well, you still, you you still can't run, correct? Hell no, no. Right. I can walk with the best of them. I can hike. I've climbed mountains. I'm 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 good for a long walk. I climb Camelback Mountain near my house in Arizona all the time. I've climbed the highest peak in Africa, right. but I don't run up the mountain. I walk. I hike up the mountain. Um, yes. So Nate, I I feel you. I went through a phase like that as well, and I had this thought that I was going to run a sub seven minute mile. And that was my my goal. And so I went hard for it. And by the by the end, when I did get under seven minutes, my back was hurting, my knees were hurting, my feet hurt. And I was like, this is not worth it. Just to achieve some personal record of some sort. So I gave that one up. I gave up dunking on my birthday. I'm accepting the old man Aww. that I am and all the miles and wear and tear I put on my body. Oh, oh. Oh, well. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, that's good, Dane. I'm glad that, uh, listen, getting outside is great. You know, that's why I'm so sad about my bike, man. I mean, that mm. just is um, mm. such a fucking bummer to me. But, you know, it's been pointed out to me many times. It's just a material object. It's not the end yeah. of the world. And I know. I get, get it. Go get a new bike, I, man. Go get a new bike. I know. Bike. I know. Hey, I you know. should write a letter. Or do you, don't you have a relationship with Trek? I do. I do have a great relationship with Trek. So tell him what happened, man. Yeah. It just what? Expect him to give me a free bike? <laughs> they do that shit. Yes. Just keep making them a podcast. And let them or just I... threaten them that if they don't, you're going to disparage the company name and talk about what shitty bikes they have, what horrible customer service they have. Well, Amen. that would just make me a flat out fucking liar. And I'm not going <laughs> to do that. Trek. No, I love Trek. In fact, I'm I'm good friends with Trek uh, Chris um, at Trek uh, Bicycle Boulder and Isaac at Trek uh, Highlands Ranch um, Bicycle. So um, right, we'll we'll work on it. And and you know what? Likely, and we'll get into the Broncos here in a second. But likely, what we'll do is we've been talking about getting an e-bike for a long time um, because we <coughs> well. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The reason is. So my wife can join me when we go, when I go out for rides. And so that, you know, so she would be on the, uh, she'd be on Wait, the so She'd be on an e-bike and you'd be on a regular bike. Correct. Correct. Wow. And, and I just think commuting wise, I'll be a little environmental here. Um, not every time you go out, do you want to get a big workout in? However, being able to commute smartly, um, with an e-bike, I think is a way better option than the car. And it's, it's crazy how you can use public transportation and different ways to get around where you don't even need a car. So that's my little hippy dippy, um, boulder-esque Chad, uh, sort of view, view of life. And, I'm with uh, you. I'm buying some e-bikes. 
Because in Arizona, it's so, so much of the year, it's too hot to actually ride a bike and get someplace without dripping sweat. Yeah. But if I had an e-bike and I could just kind of press go, yeah. and I can skip the car, I can enjoy a breeze yeah. and, and arrive someplace not with my shirt stuck to me. So e-bikes are on my list probably in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to pick up a, a set for the house in Arizona. I was uh, I was living in Venice Beach uh, on my beach cruiser when the whole e-bike, e-scooter thing started to happen. And I would be like fighting the wind. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going down uh, Washington Boulevard toward the ocean and I'm just p- p- pedaling, man. I'm like, oh, good, just into it. And then I hear this <laughs> next to me and this fucker just passes me. I'm like, what? You, oh, you cheater. You're a cheater. <laughs> Oh, I got passed on a curve the the day that my bike got stolen. That morning, I had a great ride. Cherry Creek Path, about 18 miles just from my house down to Ball Arena. And on the Cherry Creek Path, there's little areas where it gets narrow. And I got passed by a fucking e-bike. The guy wasn't even pedaling. And it pissed me off. And uh, And he's passing me like on a curve, too. It's like, hey, dude, that's not even a fucking bicycle. That's a motorcycle. You know, I don't know if you should even be here if you don't have to do any of that. So while I talk about getting one, they still piss me off. I mean, you know, uh, and, however, and trust G-Mac, me. Yes. The benefits that you got versus him, you got a boost in oh. testosterone. You were able to go home and get an erection. This guy went home and couldn't, 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 couldn't get it up. Uh, no doubts about it. I, yeah. I was seeing that. I'm like, wow, my boner is so much bigger than his. It was, exactly. you know, I just, that's what I was thinking. Right. And, uh, and, and listen, let me tell you, there's no greater satisfaction than passing somebody on an e-bike on a, uh, a bicycle tier for my truck. Mm. You'll get a new one, man. Yeah. The, um, Odds are out about Bo Nix, and we'll get into part two of screaming at each other. Uh, we left off yesterday, uh, but the Denver Broncos are now the odds on favorite to draft Bo Nix. The Broncos are at minus 135, Giants plus 550, Raiders plus 650, Vikings wow. plus 650. So, um, listen, I'm not trying to prop up gambling sites here, but it is interesting, Chad, when you see what the wise guys think about the odds and you know, they're the ones studying it the most. So odds on favorite for Bo Nix, the team for him to be on is the Broncos reaction. I mean, there's a reason why I was just in Vegas for the Super Bowl and those palaces called casinos get get bigger and bigger and more spectacular. Those guys seem to have some insider information, no matter what the sport, Uh, you know, I guess this kills the whole JJ McCarthy thing. Um, So now we've moved on to the, fifth best quarterback in this draft um so in the end I, I suppose this makes you happy because you want the broncos to draft a quarterback no matter what right you're you're kevin costner no matter what i i do but i do like bo Nix in particular but yeah more than jj mccarthy uh, you know it's hard for me to say because i'm not in those meetings i don't know I, I didn't have personal conversations with these What's guys. What's your gut tell you? Yeah, man? but you said you liked him in particular. You chose those words. In particular. What, what is about him particularly that is better than J.J. McCarthy? More college Gilbert? more college starts, 61. Yep. Uh, different level of maturity. But but all these guys are good. So I'm not trying to prop up Knicks to you know, put somebody else down. But I do like his background and where he comes from. And I like his stock. I like his measurement. I think as his dad is a coach and an ex quarterback, I just think this guy has been processing. I'll use a Sean Payton term, Nate. I think he's been processing quarterback information his entire life. Yeah, I think it's go ahead, Chad. Do you think there's a negative to him being 24? Do you think there's a negative that he was going against, you know, uh, a freshman DB sure whose girlfriend just broke up with him sure and he just failed his chemistry exam on Friday before the team left for the trip so he's a grown-ass man going against an 18 year old out there in college football in the Pac-12 versus the NFL you know as we talked about before we're all trained assassins and killers and killers in the NFL and so that advantage won't exist anymore could his Oregon experience be a, an artifact of that and he's actually not that good he just had the opportunity to play against people who were beneath them from a football experience level i'd say it's a very fair argument and if you can get a better player and processor out of jj mccarthy who's three years younger then you're going to be that much better for it for a longer period of time 
I just don't think the Broncos, it's kind of a twofold thing. I don't think the Broncos are going to be able to get JJ McCarthy. Um, and on the same hand, I like Bo Nix. Nate. Yeah, I like Bo Nix. I think uh, Bo Nix is the target. Bo Nix is going to be a better pro than J.J. McCarthy, in my okay. opinion. And he's ready to hit the ground running more so than than J.J. McCarthy would be because of the experience you mentioned. Uh, this is something I spoke about in the past, but the, the 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 CBA that dictates the way the NFL operates doesn't allow a lot of practice time, doesn't allow a lot of time right. at the facility. There's not a ton of OTAs. These college guys, man, they get together, they start throwing, they throw so much together. And the connection you see sometimes in college football is superior than the one you see in the NFL because these guys actually get to spend more time throwing than the NFL guys. There's so many restrictions on practice time in the NFL. And so, in my opinion, the guy with a more college experience has a better opportunity to be successful in the NFL because of the restrictions on practice time, also the short leash that everyone has now, mm -hmm. right? You talk about the 37-game doctrine. Ain't, ain't nobody getting 37 games anymore, right? right. You're going to get 10. You're going to get 12. You'll maybe get 20. And so is J.J. McCarthy still on his the, the front end of his learning curve there, whereas Bo Nix is going to be more apt to get the most out of, of those around him uh, at an earlier time. I think Bo Nix is a, a guy who temperamentally Sean Payton appreciates. Yeah, uh, he likes his trajectory. He likes the way he handles himself. I think he reminds him probably of some Drew Brees uh, tendencies. And Drew Brees was was knocked for having a less than stellar arm. Uh, Bo Nix, that's the knock against him as well. So. Um, I think Bonix is their target, and I think he will be better than J.J. McCarthy and, and Jaden okay. Daniels and those guys, personally. Chad, you want to uh, chime in there? Are you good? So I, I suppose the question becomes, did the Broncos stay at 12? Because there's not going to be your choice of quarterbacks at 12. Right. You're going to get the leftovers. At You're going to get Knicks or Penix. Yeah, so that that's that. Those are your options at twelve. So the question yep. becomes: Do they move up? Um, because if you've got your sights set on JJ McCarthy, he's probably not going to be available at twelve. So then you you know do you just accept the Bo Nix possibility or Penix possibility, which seems yeah. like good early for him according to most draft folks, or do you try to move up? And you know I think that's the the, the bigger question here because yeah I think there's a chance these guys will be successful all five of them. Um, but which one do you love? And do you love him so much that you're willing to give up first round picks to get to number three? That's going to take three first rounders as evidenced by the Trey Lance deal to get yeah. to five. That's probably two first rounders in a second. So, you know, what are you willing to give up to get the guy you think is the guy? Yeah, I think they'll just stay pat. I really do. After all is said and done. Um, I think they'll just stay where they're at. I'm very curious what the Patriots will do. And I do think the Patriots will move out of that pick. And I specifically think they'll move out, in my opinion, with um, with uh, with Minnesota. I think Minnesota will move up. So there may be some, if that does happen, there may be some wiggle room for the Broncos to move up to four uh, and not give up all those draft picks because that would have already been expended. And the Cardinals may be just like, well, we'll just take what we can get at this point which would still be good. I mean, it would at least be a 2025 first round pick, but they could just stay at 12 and get Knicks or Penix. Most likely, most likely. And, and I agree with you guys on this. There's always a lot of hype and we have talked a lot about quarterbacks going one, two, three, four, maybe six in the top 12. I bet that doesn't happen. I bet it doesn't happen. At the end of the day, we always kind of overhype what everybody's going to do. And somehow Nate, we come back to reality happens every year. So I don't know why this year would be any different. Yeah, I think the NFL, you know, teams are starting to pay attention to the trends. Ever since the COVID year, offensive football has been declining. Passing yards have been going down every single year. Passing completion percentage going down um, every year since COVID. Why? Because we're overvaluing quarterbacks and swinging on them early, not valuing the rest of the roster, putting them in a position where they can't succeed. So maybe some of these teams are actually starting to look at this stuff. And when Sean Payton says things like, we're going to get it right and we're happy that the rest of the league doesn't is, is, doesn't know how to get it right or something to that effect, right. that's what he's talking about. That's right. what he's talking about. Right. And so it goes back to our discussion yesterday about how you're building your team. I think the Broncos, if they traded up to number three and gave up these three picks that are very valuable to them, that would hurt their future a lot. And especially if, you know, like you said, 36% hit rate, right? 
So yeah. if you give away three of your first round picks for a 36% chance, and that doesn't hit because yep. the chances are it's not going to. Yeah. So you're saying it's probably not going to happen. So we're we're okay with giving up these three picks as well. That would be a huge risk, I think, when you're trying to build the entire team. Yeah, I, I think there's a difference though between like giving all that up and still being somewhat aggressive. Like, for example, Chad, I'll go to you on this. What do you think it would take for the Broncos from to go from 12 to 9 with the Bears? 12 to 9. What do you think it would take? Uh, obviously, you would exchange first-round picks this year. Yeah. Um, and maybe uh, a 2. A 2? Uh, really? To go up three spots? 12 to 9, a 2. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Well, that's you're, not gonna, a, you're not gonna do it for a, a fourth or a fifth. It's got to be something substantial. And we're talking top ten pick here. You don't think you could get that for like a third and a fifth? No. I mean, the Broncos did pick up a couple of extra draft picks for the uh, Jerry Judy trade. No, I don't think so. Not 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 to get into the top ten. Any entry into the top ten's got to involve. If it's top five, it's got to involve some ones. If it's five, six through ten, it's got to involve at least a two. Well, I do like moving up, but I just think um, I think Nick's, how I think this will be just, there. You just want to move to the nine, D Mac? I mean, if you want the fourth quarterback off the board, you've got to move to four. I don't think you have a choice. If um, if you're okay with the fifth or sixth quarterback taken, see, I think Minnesota is going to move up. Here's my question. I'll answer my question with a question, I guess. What teams behind the Broncos? Do you think may still want a quarterback? Who who else? Because maybe you're okay taking the fifth quarterback off the board at 12. But who else do you think is legitimately interested in a quarterback, guys? Anybody? Well, it's hard to tell. I mean, uh, Vikings, Raiders, right? Um, well, Vikings are ahead of the Broncos. Yeah. Right. They're, they're talking left. about who's behind and who's going to move up. Yeah, Raiders like who, who, who would yeah. move in front of the Broncos, stopping them from taking the fifth quarterback off the board? Yeah, the Raiders at thirteen. Um, maybe the Seahawks get aggressive. I know they got uh, you know Geno there, but they're probably looking for a plan of the future. After that, it starts to get pretty slim. Um, are the Rams ready to you know get Matt Stafford's replacement at nineteen? Um, the Steelers got one of the cheaper quarterback rooms in the league at uh, at twentieth, but I think they're going to stay with. Justin Fields and Russell Simmons for this year. I mean, Russell Wilson, not Russell Simmons for this year. Um, yeah, but then you start going into teams that have options. Uh, Miami's got their quarterback. Philly's got their quarterback. Vikings got 23. So they got two first-round picks this year. The Cowboys got their guy. Green Bay's got their guy. Um, is Tampa sold on Baker? Probably. They just gave him an extension. So This year, yeah, for yeah, sure. I, yeah. Outside of the Raiders, they're the, the Raiders are the only definite who has a clear-cut need. All right, so then you have to ask yourself, I agree with you on all that. I, I think it's the Raiders and maybe, I mean, maybe the Seahawks. A super dark horse would be the Cowboys uh, because how committed are they to Dak Prescott? Uh, but th but that's that's a, a, a real dark horse. The Giants are an interesting team, and I don't think they're going to go in that direction because Daniel Jones' cap hit is unreal. But, I mean, you know, who knows? I don't know if they're solidified because they got, you know, Drew Locke and and uh, Daniel Jones. But other than that, I think the Broncos are going to be all right at 12. I do. Um, to get the fifth quarterback. The fourth quarterback, they're going to have to move up. So, again, it, it depends on just how you feel. But the concept of draft, of, of dropping back, I think is, I think that's crazy. I, I think that's an insane way to, to get a quarterback if you want one, Nate. Um, but that being said, in terms of us yelling at each other, one of the promises we made was, well, other ways the Broncos, you know, part two, as you put it, Chad, other ways the Broncos could actually, you know, get to where they need to go without the quarterback. So, all right, I'm up for consideration, although I might disagree, but okay, fine. Let's do it. You got to reinvent this team. Part two in this argument. How are you doing it? What what What's your next steps specifically? I'll let you go first, Nate. Go for it. Well, I want to draft Bo Nix, so I I don't really know what, you know, I'm not veering off of the idea of drafting a quarterback on the number 12 pick. What I'm veering off of the idea of doing is trading up and trading away your first picks for one of these Drake May guys or J.J. McCarthy guys. or J Like, who who says that Drake May is going to be any good? Why do we think Drake May is going to be so good? Why is his name the consensus number two? What did he do that was so amazing? He's got baby hands. 
I mean, that that might <laughs> who's the last baby handed quarterback that led led his team to the promised land? JJ McCarthy also tiny hands. Kenny Pickett had tiny hands and fell in the draft, and then he got he, he got traded. He's not very good at spinning that ball. So um why do we, and what about Jaden Daniels? Like, why is why is the are these guys consensus number yeah, I don't two, know. That's number good. three? Uh, Chad, do you know that? <clears throat> no, there's there's starting to be a shakeup. Um, Lewis Riddick from ESPN, former NFL personnel guy, who's you know got on every every NFL show on ESPN. He's got Jaden Daniels as his number one quarterback over Caleb Williams. Wow. Um, I've seen mocks where uh, Drake May is is fourth behind JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy's getting so much momentum he's bumped him down to fourth so i don't think there's a clear consensus but there's 90 plus 95 percent plus folks that think that caleb williams is the best quarterback in the draft after that i i think each of these guys as far as their slotting percentage goes down a bit um drake may seems to be the consensus number two but i would say there's 20 percent, 25 maybe even 30 percent of folks who think Jaden daniels is going to be a better pro um, there are some concerns about his style of play and his pretty slim body. He takes a lot of hits <clears throat> for a guy that doesn't have the body to be able to do that. Um, so as we talked about yesterday, it was a 36% hit ratio. And that's and that's based on what? Quarterbacks, is that first-round quarterbacks who take their team to the playoffs? Is that the... Basically, yeah. You win, they take your team to the playoffs, they've got pretty good numbers. It's, you know, like, hey, I'm glad we have this guy. That That kind of metric. Okay. But I suppose to answer the question, the, the the question you just asked is how does this team move forward if they don't get a quarterback here Correct. in the draft? Correct. Um, is Jarrett Stidham the guy? And are you going to go out into the treacherous waters of NFL retread quarterbacks who have failed other places and go down that path? Did you see who the uh, Kansas City Chiefs just signed as a backup? Carson Wentz. Yeah. Carson Wentz. Yeah. 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 If, if you're a first round pick as a quarterback, you get to bounce around this league as long as you want to. Um, there's, there's always somebody who's going to think he, I just got to get my hands on this guy. Mm. Obviously Andy Reed is incredibly good at coaching quarterbacks. So I don't think he's going to resurrect Carson Wentz's career, but can you make him into a serviceable backup? That's certainly possible. But if you go with Jared Stidham, then what do you do? What do you do with that 12th pick? Do you go with uh, Brock Bowers? Uh, you know, what seems to be the most generational tight end, since Gronk, because he can actually run block. He's not just a Kyle Pitts with Atlanta, who's a glorified receiver. He's mm -hmm. an actual tight end who'll get his nose dirty. It makes it easier for a quarterback, a guy who's open in the middle of the field. It's a shorter throw. It takes uh, less accuracy. It takes less precision to throw the ball to the tight end than it does to a wide receiver. If they're going against lesser defenders. That'd be a way to instantly upgrade the middle of the field, which was lacking for all of last year yeah. with our quarter of a billion dollar quarterback last year. Well, is is that the impact aside from quarterback, which we all want? But okay, fine. Aside from quarterback, Nate is Bowers the next best thing, and if not Bowers, who specifically or what position would be the most impactful, the quickest? So if you think about Bowers, the tight end rarely comes into the league and lights it up right away. Uh, Sam Laporta was a rookie last year with the Lions and had a very good season. Um, but traditionally it takes tight ends a couple years to figure it out because there's so many new moving parts. Mm -hmm. Brock Bowers, for example, is going to have to be blocking dudes like Chad Brown and even bigger dudes that he never really had to do at Georgia. Right. And if you look at the system, um, that Sean Payton wants to run, and I'm sure, you know, he, if he brought in Brock Bowers, he'd have an idea of how to use him, and it'd be Jimmy Graham esque in some ways, but he'd also want him to stick his hand in the dirt and learn all the other shit. So you're going to, it's going to take a couple years before Brock Bowers really comes into his power. You're not going to like this answer, but to me, there's not a single position group on the Broncos that couldn't use an a badass. Yeah. So yeah. you got your big board here, your best player on it. If it's number 12 and it's your turn, take that guy. Mm. And then the next, the next pick you have, do the fucking same thing and do it for the entirety of the draft. Understanding that a rising tide lifts all boats in every position group. Every day on the practice field, I talk about this all the time, the effect that Champ Bailey had on the team when he arrived. Um, he made the DBs better. He made the defense better. He made the D linemen better. He made the receivers better. He made the quarterback better. All of us were better for having to go against him every day. So you just want to fill your team with badass dudes, especially at the front end of this tenure for Sean Payton and with very low expectations this year, right? So if you don't get a quarterback, it's okay. You go with Stidham and you build your team up 
with the badassiest dudes you can find. Badassiest. <laughs> and you start building something special for the future. And I always go back to the fucking, you know, Kansas City Chiefs model. We look at Patrick. We got to find a Patrick Mahomes. Well, Patrick Mahomes didn't land on the Chiefs until Andy Reid had been there for, what, six, six years, right? Six or seven years. Yeah. So, and he had done exactly what I'm talking about, building this team from the ground up. And Alex Smith was the quarterback, kind of the placeholder, I guess. But he had him winning 10 games a year and getting to the playoffs. It was then when the team was ready and assembled and ready for their guy to come in and take it to the next level that Patrick Mahomes fell in their lap. I am not opposed for the Broncos building that way. And maybe we don't find our quarterback of the future for two, three, four more years. And I would be all right with that if that meant in five, six, seven years, we, we were winning back-to-back Super Bowls. Chad, what's that position? Is it tight end? Is is, is well, Are we just looking for the badassiest at, at whatever position because the depth is so weak? I, well, yeah, to Nate's point, there's a ton of positions that, that can be upgraded, but I think tight end is such a clear and obvious one to bring in a guy who's got that skill set. And again, maybe I'm biased because, you know, the, I, the great tight ends who I win against, they were they presented an element to your offense that made it more difficult to defend. It wasn't just difficult to defend this particular player. When that guy was on the field, he made it overall more difficult to defend the entire offense because I don't know if it's going to be run or pass if he's on the field. Yeah. And if it's a if it's a run, he's certainly capable of blocking his assignment. And if it's a pass, he's better than every linebacker and safety we got on the field. So that kind of weapon just presents so much flexibility for a team that needs that in the middle of the field. And if we're talking about a team that's going to go without one of these great quarterbacks, they're going to need those kind of safety blanket comfort things, those comfort blanket pieces for Jared Stidham that are, can make those easier throws all that much more better. So um, the top receivers – those three receivers, um, Marvin Harrison Jr., um, Rome from from uh, I didn't say yeah from Washington, from, from Washington yeah. Uh, the, the kid from Oregon. Those guys are going to go in the top seven or eight, so th- they won't they won't be there at twelve either. So the again the the, the difficulty here of getting a true stud at, at a position, um, one of the best in, in the draft, I think Brock Bowers presents probably the biggest upside and a particular fit for this team where it has a need there. Is there a middle linebacker, Chad, that they might that, that you think is like the badassiest no linebacker in the in the middle draft? linebackers are, are now just they're they're almost like running back. Yeah. They're yeah they're, it's they're, crazy. Their value from a yep. dollars and cents perspective way down and their value in the draft perspective has just gone down and down and down. So there's there's nobody worthy of the 12th pick. I can't even tell you an inside linebackers like the most significant inside linebacker in this draft is a bit of a mystery. Right. Loads of outside linebackers, oh, you know, yeah. and Absolutely. D linemen for sure. But gosh, the inside linebacker is this. Never mind, like the middle linebacker. That thing is really gone. That like that is like way over. Yeah, it's the um, same thing. Yeah, it is crazy. Uh, our guy, Kevin Draco. God, Nate, I hope I'm breathing <laughs> or six or seven years. Kevin, good guy. Uh, here's Brent, uh, left tackle. Bowles is 71 years old. I don't think he's quite that old, but we understand um, what the deal is. But the Broncos did sign a free agent yesterday. I, uh, I'm waiting for excitement. His yeah, name, who was it, man? Who was it? Calvin Throckmorton. Ah, okay, the yeah. old Throckmorton clan. Throcky, as we call it. Good him. old Throcky. Calvin Throckmorton, a one-year minimum deal, uh, 6'5", 315 guard, so a little bit taller, but, you know, guard guy who's been a bit of a journeyman, although he's got a, a bunch of starts in there. Um, minimum deal. And this this is why the, the signing of Calvin Throckmorton, to me, is an indicator <laughs> of why George Payton has a little bit of job security. Because you think Sean Payton is rustling through his files looking for low-level guards to sign to fill out the roster? That is, man, you want to talk about down-in-the-weeds work that you have to do in a personnel department. Um, do you think that's unique to George Payton to find the Throckmeyer guy? Like, Throckmorton. Get it fucking get it right. right. Don't, 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 don't fuck around with the Throckster. Sorry, Calvin. Um, uh no no i i don't i don't know if it's that i i i think i think anybody could basically sort of do that it's just that why get rid of that guy who is doing that for you 
I mean, but you're right. Hey, listen, bro, you're right. I, I don't think it's that difficult to find out, hey, what guards will take a million bucks a year for one year? And there's like eight of them. And you say, well, that guy's got the coolest fucking name. So we go with Throckmorton. No, yeah. no, I, I understand. Sean that, Payton but goes in there. He's like, get me a guard. And so he gets him a guard. I mean, that's, Calvin Throckmorton is not going to save George Payton's job. Now, but Sean Payton had a particular type of guard he was looking for in New Orleans because Drew Brees wasn't short. Of oh, guess where Throckmorton used to play? New Orleans. New Orleans. Of course. So this was not George Payton. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fuck a good point. <laughs> So, yeah, it's actually the opposite. George Payton's out of here because he couldn't find Throckmorton on his own. <laughs> Throckmorton actually was playing, I think, with the Panthers, but he did start um, with, with, with the Saints and uh, Sean Payton. So, yeah, yeah actually, pretty, fair point. Maybe yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Sean Payton wants a particular type of guard who doesn't get pushed back in pass protection, who allows his quarterback to step up into the pocket so he doesn't have to do all the Russell Wilson stuff, escape in the pocket, and get away from his progressions. So Throckmorton has certainly been coached in that style. Is he going to be the starter? Probably not. But I think he can lend some experience to that group and, you know, maybe communicate what Sean Payton's actually looking for from his guards. All right. We uh, stand by for more breaking NFL and Broncos news as it comes to the draft. Here we are in April. So the countdown is on to the actual draft itself. We'll see teams probably making some moves here relatively quickly. <laughs> and we thank our guy, Ed Prather at Ed Prather Real Estate, the number one real estate team in Colorado. Boys. I got myself a big check yesterday. How about hey, that? Nice. Hey, hey, bada bing, bada boom. Fun? Uh, it's kind of crazy. It's the most money I've ever had in my bank account in my life. Aren't those fun which, checks? Uh, it's, bonus. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> but, well, I'm going to take a photo of it, and then I'm going to spend all of it almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all going to put it all down on the... Uh, yeah, the yeah. It all goes to, like, it all goes to, like, the new place. And yeah. it's just, you know... So I better down on the uh, the the odds for Bo Nix to go to the Broncos at twelve. Yeah, I'm gonna fly to Vegas tonight and put it on. Uh, I'm gonna put it on red. Okay. That, that's that's what I'm gonna do. By the way, I'm at the closing, and my real estate agent goes because we were joking about that, and he goes, "Well, you laugh, but I have a guy who actually did that." And I'm like, "What?" He goes, "Yep, he knew he was getting a big check, so he went up to Blackhawk and whatever in Colorado, and he he goes, it was sad actually. He blew like it? two. He blew like two hundred thousand dollars in like oh, before the closing, so the money was like gone before he even oh, got no. it. So oh, he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But um, no, we're gonna take a photo of it, and then it'll all be gone basically um, Thursday because we close on our uh, new house. Um, Why don't home. you drop some of the some of that new coin on uh, "Kill You with Truth, Chuckle with Pain"? Let's expand this thing, man. Uh there's thoughts in that direction. Nathaniel, my young friend, um, but you know, I'm we're, 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 we're slugging away. You know, at the end of the day, you have dreams and stars in your eyes about like how much money you'll actually have. And then, you know, it goes away pretty fast. Oh yeah. my God. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's absurd. Conga Hydra in the chat. If you could post his chat up. Oh, okay. He's got some advice for you, what you could buy with uh, some of your money. Uh, Conga Hydra, maybe the ex NFL players can give D Mac some hat tips. It's <laughs> seen better days. I wonder what that thing smells like. <laughs> How yellow you is it? Oh, like. <laughs> uh, we kill you with truth. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>